Good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk more about some of the IA stuff. Um, <clears throat> I want to go back and cover some material first to make sure everybody is on the same page before we move on to some of the newer material. And so I wanted to start first by calculating or talking about uncertainty and percent uncertainty and the importance of that and how we actually measure it. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to know when it comes to uncertainty is that there's a slight misconception. And I have a measuring device right here. That when we talk about percent uncertainty, we typically talk about how accurate I can make a measurement using a device. Okay, that's typically how we approach percent uncertainty. Um, so th that thinking leads us to believe that the percent uncertainty is, is determined by the scale that's associated with the device, but actually it's not. The percent uncertain, or not the percent uncertainty, the uncertainty itself is, is determined on how accurate you can measure it. So even though you have a device that may be able to me be able to measure centimeters or millimeters or even smaller than that, it's literally how well you can measure it. Measure it. And, and as example, take this. So imagine that you've taken a series of meter sticks and have taped them up against the wall. Let me move that down so we can see the top of the meter stick. And I have dropped a ball so that it strikes the ground and then bounces back up to a particular height. Now the accuracy of this meter stick is going to be one millimeter. So that's how well this, this device can measure, is up to one millimeter. Why are you not focusing? That is, that's bothering me a little bit. Okay, but it's not the uncertainty of this measurement. The uncertainty of this measurement is going to be associated with my eye here looking over in that direction and seeing how high the ball comes up and guesstimating where that measurement actually is. So one millimeter is not going to really cut it. That, that uncertainty is, is far, too, it's far too low for this kind of measurement. Instead, my argument here is that if I looked, were to look at this and I were to imagine the top of this ball and where it would line up, I might assume, and I think fairly, that the uncertainty is plus or minus one centimeter. It's a pretty big range, but if you think about your ability to determine the level point in which this ball comes up, I think one centimeter is probably appropriate. And that's kind of how uncertainty is done. It's, it's your assumption. It is your, it is your, uh, your best guess when it comes to the measurement that you've made. Um, and there, there are definitely factors to that where you could improve your uncertainty by improving your methods of measurement. Like instead of using an eyeball, I used a whole bank of laser beams and I'm watching it cross the beam and where I got to the highest beam would give me a better idea where that uncertainty is. But as just being able to look with my bare eye and see where that, that lines up, that's what's going to determine it, not the accuracy of this measuring device, but the accuracy of how well you are, how well you can use it. OK, so using this example and this uncertainty that I've come up with one with one centimeter. And that's going to be plus or minus. I'm going to claim that I've made a measurement and the measurement I've made is fifty three point six or seven five ce um, uh, centimeters. So right now I've got a problem. If I have an uncertainty associated with one centimeter, then these digits are not relevant. The only thing that I should be recording is 53 centimeters. That 0.75 is beyond the accuracy of your method of measuring. So this measurement of 53.75 is inaccurate and instead I should be recording 53, okay? So with the, with the actual recorded value of 53 centimeters, I'm gonna now calculate what the, what's known as the percent uncertainty. And the reason why percent uncertainty is important is because it, it allows me to calculate and tabulate all of the uncertainties of my process. So I'm gonna take that uncertainty, that plus or minus one, and I'm gonna divide it by 53. 
that times that by a hundred percent and I would have my percent uncertainty and I did break out my calculator so I can get this done um, instead of just kind of talking about it in an abstract form equals no, you're a silly calculator okay so I am approximately getting 0 0.018 but if I multiply that by 100 percent I'm getting 1.8 percent still really really low still a really really low for that percent uncertainty and even I mean at that point I would even go back and 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 reevaluate maybe one centimeter isn't good enough maybe that one centimeter maybe more than or is too good I should say not isn't good enough maybe it's one and a half maybe it's two um because two percent is pretty small okay but eh, it's it's feasible it's feasible okay so the next way that I could calculate a percent uncertainty that's associated or an uncertainty that's associated with this sort of thing is I'm going to take an example that's literally the same example, but I'm going to do it several times. So I have my meter stick. I've already decided that with the human eye, my accuracy on determining how high this ball goes is probably going to be no greater than plus or minus one centimeter. Now to the other way in which I can calculate the uncertainty of this instead of relying on this number, I could do this. I've made one measurement, I dropped it from that height, I got 53. I got a second measurement, I got 54. I got a third measurement, which was 53. I got a fourth measurement, which is 52. And then lastly, I got a fifth measurement, which is 55. All of that expressed in centimeters. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sum all of those up. So 53 plus 54 plus 53 again plus 52 plus 55 equals. So that will give me a value of 267. And I'm going to take the average. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide that by 5. And that is going to give me 53.4. Now, I'm already making an argument here that this 53.4, that regardless of whatever this decimal point is, I'm not going to be able to get anything more accurate than one centimeter. So I'm going to say that that is going to be equal to 53. So that means that of my data set, my average value is about 53. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what my greatest range is. So I'm going to look at my highest number and I'm going to look at my lowest number and see how much that range is. So my highest number turns out to be 55 and my lowest number turns out to be 52. So that means that my range here, I've got plus or minus two over here or plus two and I have a minus one over here. So looking at what I have here is that my uncertainty probably isn't two centimeters, but instead is our one centimeter, but instead is two is two centimeters. I'm not going to change these numbers so that it corresponds to that two centimeter number, but I am going to go through the process to explain what I've done. I calculated the average. I saw how far away from the, the average my most extreme value was. And I said that would have to be my uncertainty. That's the greatest variation I've got in my measurement from the average. Okay, so that's another way of calculating uncertainty. And in the end, I'm going to still calculate my percent uncertainty the same way. I'm going to take plus or minus 2, and I'm going to divide it by 53. Okay, and that's going to give me my percentage. If I got 1.8, that's going to give me 2.6%. Still a pretty low number. I think it's, um, I think it's probably more in line with what the, how accurate this experiment is. But that's one way to calculate uncertainty. Now, this... This method of calculating uncertainty is a way of kind of back checking things. Um, I predominantly use this method where I take multiple trials under the same conditions. Like in this case, I dropped the ball from the same height. I take that multiple trials and I and I and I take that average and I divide it and, and you know figure out what the range is. I predominantly use this method for time. 
because time is the one measurement that most of us make and we make horrible assumptions on how accurate we've measured time. Most people will just take their stopwatch, make a measurement of time and claim the accuracy of the stopwatch is how accurate you actually measure time. This method is a far better method. And, and in the end, when I, I could have left it 53.75 and 53 point whatever and got the average from there and then go, well, if, it, if my average turned out to be something, or my range turned out to be 2.1337, um, I just crop it off. I just crop it off and say that this is my uncertainty, plus or minus 2. And then I make sure that all of my data corresponds to that to that value, that one, that one centimeter mark. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Um, moving on to the next thing. 